Greg Meyer. Yeah. So as we, we spoke about last time, uh, Penn State had yet to get a quarterback commit. That is no longer the case. They have gotten their quarterback, uh, Ethan Grunkmeyer. Uh, if I do recall correctly, I did specifically say I felt that he was the number one guy on their board um, last time we spoke, last last episode. And uh, that's the guy that ends up pulling the trigger and committing. Um, good get for Penn State. I know Mike Yersich was, was very high um, on Ethan, as well as uh, James Franklin and, and the whole crew. And... In my opinion, he's he's a high uh, three star guy right now, uh, pretty much across the board. I think he definitely has an opportunity to see that uh, bump uh, into into four star territory and and turn into that blue chip recruit. Um, yeah. Another thing that I think really kind of solidifies that point is he was here over the weekend uh, for the Elite Ele- uh, Elite Eleven Regional that was held at right. State College High, um, as we spoke about previously, and. Performed very, very well. Um, and I do believe he has now uh, gotten to the national stage. Now he's received an invitation yeah. to the Elite 11 national finals uh, to go compete against the other uh, top quarterbacks across the country. So a lot of promise, a lot of talent. Um, not the biggest guy. He's about 6'2", 190. Uh, not necessarily small. That's kind of right about where Sean Clifford was in high school, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. But uh, I just got done actually watching all of his huddle tape, all of his huddle highlights, freshman year, mm-hmm. sophomore year, junior year. Tangible improvement from year to year. Um, but even starting as sophomore and obviously junior, the technique and fundamentals look very good. Uh, footwork looks good. Uh, arm path looks great, actually. His release is very quick. He has no noticeable uh, hitching in his arm path, in his throwing motion. Uh, yeah. It is very compact. It is very efficient. So it's not a long windup. It's not taking a lot of time. If you're running a lot of timing routes or slants, things like that, where the ball needs to come out quick or you're going against the blitz, uh, he has the, the ability to do that. He can get that ball out in a fraction of a second, very, very quick um, to release the football. Uh, when that is the play call and when he when he's dealing with those types of things. Um, very talented, down-the-field thrower. Uh, not the biggest yep. arm, not a Drew Aller-type arm, but he's got good touch on the ball, throws, throws it with good spin, um, easy to catch, and he has a little bit of a blend of kind of like Sean Clifford kind of style with a Trace McSorley kind of style where – he can kind of ad lib and make up some things as he go uh, as uh, as things go along. Uh, yeah. He can buy time with his feet. Uh, he can actually hurt you with his legs. He's he's pretty mobile in that way. Um, but he has a very good ability, kind of like Trace uh, Trace did, with moving the pocket, escaping some initial pressure, but keeping his eyes downfield, looking for a big chunk play. Um, hit, you know, numerous of those time and time again across all of his highlight uh, videotape. Now, again, obviously, it's a highlight film. They're all going to be great plays, but great anticipation, great pocket mobility and pocket presence. Uh, Excellent vision to keep his eyes downfield. Deliveries on time, deliveries on target, deliveries into small windows. You saw the whole thing across uh, across his highlight tape. So I'm very high on him. Um, Another thing of note, is uh, he has the, he's working with the same private quarterbacks coach uh, that Drew Aller did in Brad Mandler, yeah. Yeah. Um, which kind of ties everything into the technique and the fundamentals, footwork, uh, throwing motion, all those things being very efficient and compact and really uh, providing a great ability uh, to get a lot of velocity on the ball uh, and a lot of uh, downfield distance as well um, with not a whole lot of overall body effort again, the way Brad coaches it, it's a, it's more of a rotational movement as far as far as uh, as opposed to getting your whole body involved and and all those types of things, just creating a lot of velocity through the hips and things. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I like him. I, I think it's definitely a good pickup. I think if I had to bet now, I would say he for sure ends up a four star quarterback, uh, especially after the Elite Eleven. I think there's going to be some yeah. re ranks. I think he's going to be a four uh, four star because he is. He's very, very good from everything that I've seen. 
yeah, it, you know, if you guys are interested in any kind of any type of player that Penn State signed, literally just get on YouTube and look up their highlight tape. Most of the time they have highlight tapes on there or huddle, like Austin said. You might have to pay a little extra to see all of the highlights on there, but just get on YouTube and and, and watch them. They are because because you get to see like, oh, this is a three star guy. But then you get on there and you watch him and you're like, wow, this guy's really good. So Gronkmeyer, very talented, has a very good arm. He's mobile. He's more of like an athlete than anything. Yeah, he's very athletic and he has a lot of zip on the ball. Uh, he kind of reminds me in terms of like his arm strength and his like just ability to really rip the ball out. He reminds me of Anthony Morelli, to be honest, which all of you, you know, calm down. I know Anthony Morelli was not that good, but he really had a good arm, like a like a good, powerful arm. He really ripped the ball. He's the number one quarterback in his class, for those of you that forget. He was the number one quarterback in his class from Pittsburgh, from the Pittsburgh area. Terrible decision-making wasn't that accurate, but he had a, a – uh, man, he had a really good, like, powerful arm, and that's what Grunkmeyer kind of reminds me of. Not to curse him, but – he he has a lot of zip. He's pretty accurate. He can run. He can throw on the move. He can run. He's six two. That that's pretty tall, uh, for a quarterback. That's not bad. You know, he's not as tall as Aller, but he he's he's definitely a talented quarterback. And honestly, I think the reason that Penn State is looking to him be is because he just fits their system. He's mobile. He can rip the ball. Uh, you know, James has talked about it in our comments before he. He hopes that Penn State doesn't try to make Aller a mobile quarterback. Even though he is fairly mobile, they want him to just be – he wants him to just be more of a pocket passer. So I think Grunkmeyer, to be quite honest with you, he might be a little more mobile than Drew Aller. So I think that's one thing that they're looking at with him. So I think they got hit – They I think they got this guy so early that he's, like Austin said, he's got to move up. He'll probably be a four-star, maybe a five-star. We'll see. He definitely has the potential to be a five-star for sure. I mean, he just got invited to the National Elite 11, which I believe Trent Dilfer is still a part of with that. So he's got he's got a lot of potential, and Penn State got him early enough that he pretty much he, he can only go up. So it's good to see that they got him. But just looking at his tape, he's very talented. He's mobile. He has, like I said, he's got a lot of zip on the ball. Uh, you know, when you see, when you see like a ball, like when you see a football come out of quarterback's hand and you, you know, the ball is like pretty much already in the receiver's hands, you got a lot of exit velocity on that. Now, you know, courtesy of blue white illustrated, I was watching one of their clips and they showed some of his highlight tapes too. And his, I think his, his uh, release time his exit velocity on his throws, stuff like that is like average, but he's going into a senior year. He's going to get better. So, you know, when you have all that combined right now, he's in terms of just tests, he's average, but in terms of everything else, just the way he looks, because at the end of the day, I don't really care about all that stuff. Can he win games? Can he throw touchdowns? Can he lead us down the field? Can he be a leader on the team? That's that's all that matters. Um, I mean, Jamarcus Russell, he tested off the charts on everything. And I don't know if they didn't do like a – I don't know what his uh, Wonderlick score was, which is kind of like – kind of dumb in the first place, but that's a different story. That's coming from like actual guys that played in the NFL. Like that's, that's just a kind of – kind of like a pointless test but I don't know if they didn't do any tests on Demarcus Russell like for his mentality but he was just so lazy it's it's incredible how lazy he was and he was a first overall pick so you know tests don't always mean everything and unfortunately you know I'm a uh I'm a uh Mel Kuyper guy I do like Mel Kuyper he is one of the best at what he does Mel Kuyper like made the NFL draft what it is in terms of like the spectacle that it is, but that's a story for a different day. But 
you know, it makes him look bad because he's like, this guy's so good. And he's, he's not. Uh, so just for me personally, what I do is I just look at how they perform. That's it. I don't care about all those tests, but. Well, in, in, uh, in Mel's defense, uh, he was very physically gifted. He was very physically talented. He was good. Um, you know, when, when he wanted to be, (laughs) you know, to your, to your point, uh, the mentality wasn't there struggled keeping himself in in requisite shape to play at the highest level um you know it, it's kind of unfortunate when you go that high to draft and it you know it turns out that the mentality is not really there to be successful there you know you're given this great opportunity and you kind of you know you kind of pass it along and, and let it pass you by it's unfortunate but is what it is uh i do think Grunkmeyer speaks very, very highly of the opportunity and, uh, you know, being a Penn State commitment. And he was very, very gracious in his commitment conversation that he had, I believe, with T. Frank. Um, Just very, very thankful for uh, his parents and his family for supporting him and giving him this opportunity and helping him with uh, developing his skill set and things with working with Brad and and all these things. Um, He looks good, man. I, I think he's going to fare very, very well at the elite 11. Uh, I, I really do. And, you know, to your point with everything, you know, kind of just being average exit velocity, all these types of things. I can see that. I can see that maybe it's lacking a little bit of pop, Yeah. but look at I the mean, technique. You have, you, yeah. You have someone to compare it to Drew Aller. Right. You know? And, and, and again, he's that's just, a pretty, that's a pretty unfair charge, comparison. So. That's an, it's an unfair comparison for most folks, Yeah. but the, the fact remains you know, the technique, the foundation of the technique. He's got a full season, like you said. He's got a senior uh, senior year to go. He's got time to get stronger, to become even more refined and efficient with his technique, um, to use use those leverages even more so. Uh, and then he's going to get to Penn State. He's going to get in their strength program. He's going to get stronger. Yeah. All those yeah. numbers are going to tick up. Will he be elite in any one category um, from a physical traits perspective? Um that I don't know. Uh, I I would think he'll probably be above average at a, at a lot of things, and I do think he could have some elite characteristics from the perspective of up here between the years, uh, the mental side of the game, anticipation, yeah. uh, diagnosing defenses. If he can do that, if you have above average tools, but you're elite in that area, that's where you do stuff kind of like Tom Brady, because um, that's what Tom that's what Tom had. He, he didn't have the biggest arm. He didn't have, you know, he certainly wasn't the fastest. Um, You know, there were a lot of things that were kind of average-ish about Tom. Not up here, not between the years, not with diagnosing defenses, not with checking to the right calls, uh, and and not with building immense chemistry and rapport with his receiving core to know exactly what was going on uh, in pretty much every situation and just punishing teams with that. Um, you don't need to be able to throw the ball 70 yards uh, to be successful. Uh, you certainly do not. You can you can win in a myriad of ways. The ult- ultimate goal and point is that you do win. Um, that That's really it. And I think he has a lot of things going for him here. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see him compete. I, I think I think going against the best uh, and a bunch of five stars as well, going against that level of competition, I expect it to bring out the best in uh, in Ethan Grunkmeyer. Um, you know, we'll see how we'll see how all that goes, and I'm sure we'll definitely be back to, to talk about it. Yeah, a lot of potential with Grunkmeyer. The fact that he was in the Elite Eleven Regional and then he got invited to the National. You know, even even in uh, the video game I play, they have Elite Eleven on there. So it, you know, you look at that, you're like, all right, Elite Eleven, he's good. That you always want your quarterback in elite 11 because that is, I I don't know the exact details of the elite 11, but it is basically a quarterback, a a, a quarterback um, assembly line of talent. So, you know, like Penn state is like linebacker. You they're just an assembly line of linebackers into the NFL. Same thing with the elite 11 quarterback camp. Those guys are, they're the best. And, you know, growing up, going, you know, in high school, stuff like that, went to football camps all summer. I was 
pretty much all over the country. I was in, you know, Ohio. I was in West Virginia, Jersey, all over. Uh, it, it was Penn State. You know, went to um, went to a ton of camps, and I went to kicking camps. I went to senior, went to regular camps. I went to quarterback camps. I went to a quarterback camp in New Jersey when I played quarterback, and a former Connecticut quarterback was the coach, and it was his dad, and it was awesome. And I actually remember this guy when he played. Uh, he was a shorter guy, but his mechanics were just off the charts. And he held quarterback camps. It was it was awesome. So as someone who went to a ton of camps, not the Elite 11. I, I No, no way. But um, I'll say this about going to camps and how this translates, correlates to the, the Elite 11. When you go to these camps, man, you're around so many guys, so many players. And a lot of them are very, very good. Uh, for example, I heard from one of my coaches at camp, one of the camps from Penn State, Navarro Bowman. Obviously, you guys remember. I know Austin does. He would just go from camp to camp to camp to camp to camp. Do a workout, probably a personal workout for like 15 minutes. They'd give him a they'd offer him a scholarship, then he'd go to the next school. Like that's what he did. He was he was that good. So when you go to like these Elite Eleven camps, man, you, you're just it does nothing but good. You're around the top talent in the country. I think a lot of these videos you're seeing with like uh CJ Stroud and Bryce Young, I think it's like at the Elite Eleven. These guys are like competing against each other. And what did it do? Um they were the first two picks in the draft. So it, it it works out. So whether you're like the best quarterback at that camp or you're the literally on the bottom of the list, doesn't matter. It's 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 just gonna make you better. So if your quarterback is at Elite Eleven, it's very good. He's gonna get more national attention. He's going to get better. He's going to get great coaching. There's a reason these guys are at this camp. They're they're trying to make them better, pretty much. It's not just, hey, this is a display of your talent. No, they're trying to make them better. They're they they have NFL players, NFL coaches at these camps. They are is it's they are the best of the best. So I don't know. I haven't heard of anything like it, but I, I'm surprised they don't have that for like every position, Austin. You know, like Elite Eleven running backs so or Elite Eleven like corners or, or, or uh, defensive backs, you know, stuff like that. So I'm sure they do have some camps like that, but elite 11 quarterback camp, that's just one of those. Cause Trent Dilfer is involved. I think Trent Dilfer actually like started it. Regardless. Yeah. It's good to see that at, he's. Yeah. At, at, at very least he's heavily involved, obviously. Um, yeah. I, I think this is going to be, and again, I don't want to put too much pressure on him. Um, I, I think he'll take it in stride anyway, uh, you know, Ethan. But I think this is going to be a rising tide raises all ships kind of situation. I think I think he's the kind of kid that's going to get there and go into uh, into competition with all these guys that are ranked very, very highly um, for good reason. You know, uh, very, very good, good quarterbacks, mobile, elite arm talents, all these types of things. I think it's just going to raise the bar and raise the performance um, of a guy like Ethan Grunkmeyer. He just seems like that kind of guy. He throws well in pads. Uh, you know, if he's got to throw against these guys in in shorts and a T-shirt, uh, we'll see how that that goes. I think the bigger arms are going to be a little bit flashier, but I think he's going to be doing things. And, and you know, these evaluators are going to take notice of that. Um, there's no doubt about it. When it comes to operationally, uh, calling plays, uh, being that field general, uh, knowing what's going on as for uh, from a plays protection wise, um, and, and those types of things, or even just in a uh, you know simplified spread seven on seven type stuff, uh, I think I think he'll he'll do well in in any of those situations. So I expect him, like I said, to to certainly get a bump, and I think he has a, a big time opportunity, um, you know, based on how things progress and you know his work this summer with with Brad um, and all those types of things. I think he could definitely overperform um his his star valuation 
uh, and what that is currently at. Um, yeah. And I feel, I feel very confident in that. Yeah. Just final point about this and we'll move to the next subject. It was founded by Andy Bark in 1999 and the head coach of this camp now is Trent Dilfer and he's assisted by Jordan Palmer, Carson Palmer's brother, George Whitfield, Jr. Adam, uh, to Tefra- I believe is how you say his name. I've seen him before. And Charlie Fry, former Penn State coach, who's at Florida Atlantic now. Craig Nall and Matt James. And then some of the alumni of Elite 11 is uh, Andrew Luck, Trevor Lawrence, Matthew Stafford, Jameis Winston, Teddy Bridgewater, Matt Leinart, Geno Smith, Mark Sanchez, Tim Tebow, Vince Young, Kyle Orton, Justin Fields, Troy Smith. So... The NFL Network actually covers it um, on YouTube, which is something that I do. I have watched in the past. And um, it's just, you know, overall, one thing one thing about the Elite 11, too, is, I mean, we really haven't had a lot of Penn State quarterbacks in that. I think Anthony Morelli was in it. I don't know if Sean Clifford was. I think Hackenberg was, but I don't think Trace was. Um, I don't think Tommy no. Stevens was. Nope. You know, I don't think uh I don't think like Rob Bolden was or you know, uh I just I don't think we've had a lot of guys from Penn State in that. So to have Aller in it and then Grunkmeyer, that's two back to back quarterbacks we've had in this camp, which is awesome. So 